Hello and welcome back to this uh, lecture 13 on microsystems fabrication by advanced manufacturing processes. So, a brief uh, recap of what we did last time. We studied about electrode double layer theory, uh, the expression for the zeta potential we tried to derive with respect to an electrode, <laughs> where uh, zeta potential is the potential which is generated by any surface which comes in contact, a solid surface coming in contact with a solution. And then we of course, uh, modeled electrically the double layer, tried to understand how potential varies with respect to distance x in a single direction from the electrode. And then of course, we started understanding some of the basic electrochemistry behind the electrochemical machining process, ECM process. And uh, as such, uh, started deriving things like material removal rate, uh, etc., by Faraday's laws of electrolysis. So, today we have uh, just an extension of that. So, uh, what we started doing is basically understanding how mass flow rate uh, in terms of deposition or dissolution on an electrochemical process would happen and it is given by the Faraday's law, where the Faraday's law says that the total amount of mass removed is proportional to the current that is passed through the solution, uh, the time for which it is passed and something called epsilon, where epsilon is this electrochemical or uh, the, the, the atomic weight equivalent or equivalent atomic weight of a particular species, which means in turn that one mole of a species whose weight is the atomic weight A okay, of a valency Z. So, of Z valent states would have an equivalent weight epsilon of A by Z. That means, it is something like uh, the amount of charge which would be needed to remove uh, so much amount of weight. Okay. So, it gives an indication of that. Okay. And so, basically uh, that is what the atomic, the equivalent atomic weight epsilon is. And uh, of course, current time um, product is basically the amount of charge which uh, is sent into the system, the electrochemical system which does either dissolution or deposition in as in an electrochemical process. So, here uh, we can always say that the mass uh, removal rate that is m dot okay, as can be illustrated in this formula here is actually equal to the amount of equivalent weight that a person or the, uh, that a material would have that is A by Z times of uh, an idea of what is the how many number of moles of current uh, which is charge per unit time d q by d t is flown into the system. right? So, the charge per unit time which is flown into the system in terms of number of moles of charge. So, moles of charge per unit time. So, this is given by the term I by f, where f as I already mentioned is this uh, 96,500 coulomb, uh, which is actually the charge of 1 mole electron 6.023 10 to the power of 23 times of 1.6 10 to the power of minus 19. This is the charge on one electron. So, one mole electrons would have total charge of 96,500 coulombs. So, that is what the Faraday f term would be in this process. So, I by f is really indicative of the number of moles of charges per unit time, which flows into the system. right? So, and if so many moles of charges are really needed, A by Z charges are needed for uh, this amount of grams which is coming out. So, A Z by A by Z times of I by F would actually give the amount of mass rate of removal, right? the amount of mass which is coming out. So, in terms of uh, if you uh, include the density factor rho of the anode in grams per centimeter cube, the mass flow rate and density uh, equated together would result in the volume flow rate. So, Q is actually m dot by rho. Okay, which is equal to A i by rho z f. And this is in centimeter cube per second. This is the volume rate of removal of a material of an electrochemical process. So, this is very, very standard formulation of how Faraday's laws can be utilized in actually um, uh, trying to find out what is the material rate of removal of uh, uh, some particular uh, electrode, okay, which is deposited or which, which is actually stationed in some solution. So, uh, this is true so for a single phase system, where there are not multiple components or multiple metals, uh, which are involved in the electrode. It is of a single metal or a single material or the removal that you are doing on single material. However, in engineering situations, in real life problems really, 
uh, you are actually not working on direct metals, but on alloys, because alloying actually improves uh, the system properties and the engineering materials are really alloyed compositions most of the time. And so, therefore, this uh, extension of this uh, electrochemical uh, basis of material removal has to be in an alloyed system as all, well, where there is not a single phase <laughs> as one metal, but a variety of phases in mixture with each other. So, you will have different atomic weights of these phases, you will have different densities of these uh, phases, which are in dissolution. <coughs> and therefore, a complex system emerges, because of the application of this uh, straightforward single metal case into that alloyed system. So, let us look at uh, a, a problem example of that sort, uh, as mentioned here. So, let us say uh, the anode now is made up of an alloy, instead of a pure metal. And the removal rate can be found by considering the charge required to remove an unit volume of each element. So, if the atomic weights and valencies of the corresponding ions entering the electrolyte are A 1, A 2, A 3 so on and Z 1, Z 2, Z 3 so on respectively, the composition by weight of the alloy, let us say is x 1 percent of the element 1, which has an atomic weight of A 1 and valency in which it comes out as Z 1. So, this is the valency state, which actually comes into question when this material gets removed from the particular electrode. The atomic weight A 2 and its valency Z 2, the atomic weight A 3, its valency Z 3, so on and so forth respectively. And the composition by weight of this alloy is maybe let us say x 1 percent of A 1, x 2 percent of A 2, x 3 percent of A 3, so on and so forth. Okay. And the whole idea is about the removal of a volume V centimeter cube of this alloy, where all these paradigms need to be somehow integrated. So, that total amount of volume that is removed is V centimeter cube. And uh, how much will that contain in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the mass? So, if V centimeter cube is the total volume of the material that is to be removed, So, the amount of mass that it would contain would actually be V rho, where rho is the average density and this is something we need to find out in a practical application. I will just uh, let you know once we do a numerical problem. So, average density of the alloyed system. Okay. So, V rho is basically the total amount of mass, which is contained in V centimeter cube volume. And out of which, as I have already told, the system has different species of atomic weights A 1, A 2, A 3 of different valencies Z 1, Z 2, Z 3, so on up to you know some n may be component. And then in different percentages x 1, x 2, x 3, so on so forth. So, therefore, is uh, the total amount of contribution in the mass V rho coming out of the ith metal. right? Let us say so on and so forth, you have a case where you have the ith metal of percentage x i with the valence, valency z i and atomic weight equivalent, I mean atomic weight of a i. So, if the ith metal, this uh, formulation so called would get converted into V rho x i by 100. Okay. So, this much is the mass contribution of the ith metal in the total mass V rho of the alloyed system, where we assume that V volume centimeter cube or V centimeter cube of volume is coming out of the system. So, this is the mass in grams of the ith element. Okay. And uh, we need to somehow develop a strategy to calculate this overall average density of the whole alloyed system. And uh, this will come in practical application, where you can com compare the densities of uh, the different components of a system and try to somehow average it at looking at the different percentage contributions uh, that those uh, uh, independent uh, elements corresponding to i equal to some value would have in the overall uh, system. Okay. So, the amount of charge that is required to move the ith element in the volume V <coughs> is given by the formulation 
this mass removal times of z i f by a i. Okay. And uh, that is so, because of the fact that if this were the mass of the ith system, So, the amount of moles which are there in this mass assuming a i to be the atomic weight of this particular system would be given by v rho x i by 100 times of a i. And so many moles need to be removed meaning thereby uh, that these are at z i valency state meaning thereby the amount of charge that would be needed to be removed is so many moles times of the valency state. So, so many electrons uh, or so many moles of electrons would be needed to remove this charge. right? And so, the amount of charge that is required to remove the total charge that is required to remove this metal in material total charge required to remove this material would be v rho x i z i by 100 a i times of the total charge in one mole electrons that is f 96500 coulombs. So, that is the overall charge which is needed to remove the ith element in the volume v of the given alloy composition. So, obviously, if this is the charge per unit volume. Uh, the volume per unit charge would simply be a reciprocal of this and therefore, uh, the volume per unit charge of the alloy removed per unit charge is given by this formulation right here, which is simply a reciprocal of this term here. So, cut so amount of uh, volume of the alloy removed the per unit charge is simply given by uh, the formulation just the inverse of whatever is mentioned here. Okay. And that is basically uh, can be represented as 1 by v rho x i divided by 100 times of z i f by a i cut. Okay. So, therefore, the volume of the alloy removed per unit charge is basically the reciprocal of this as I mentioned before, right? mentioned earlier is just simply the reciprocal of this particular term as you can see here. So, let us just look at what the reciprocal would be like. So, we have 1 divided by v rho x i by 100 times of z i f by a i. A i is this i is the subscript okay? so the ith element in the alloyed system. So, this can be further written down as uh, rho by oh, sorry 100 by rho f these really are constants this is the average density of the alloyed system this f is having a value 1 mole uh, charge of 1 mole electrons which is 96500 coulombs. So, you can uh, consider these outside the whole you know uh, variable uh, terms or outside the scope of the variable terms. And the other uh, part basically is 1 divided by volume times of z i x i divided by a i. And uh, for v volume, because total removal is v centimeter cube. The amount of charge that would be needed is really v for a unit volume, this is the charge which is needed. right? Uh, the total volume v centimeter cube would be v divided by this value here, right? v divided by v rho x i by 100 times of z i f 
a i. Okay. So, this uh, really uh, goes to a situation where this v is eliminated, because it is per unit v volume. And uh, the total amount of charge so needed per unit volume is 1 by or 100 by rho f times of sigma x i z i time divided by a i. Right. Why sigma? Because uh, as you know that there are i components and this i varies between 1 and n. So, really looking at individualistic components where i can be 1 to n, uh, the total so called uh, volume of alloy removed uh, per unit charge okay, can be represented as this whole term 100 by rho f 1 by sigma x i z i by a i. There are certain connotations you can use here. For example, if you put the value of uh, f here as 96500, the 100 by f term comes out to be about 0 0.1035 10 to the power minus 2 as a rho value and then this whole 1 by uh, sigma x i z i by a i uh, is the total amount of volume of the alloy removed per unit charge. Volume unit is centimeter cube and charge is ampere second and that is how that is the amount of uh, uh, you know this very critical for the whole electrochemical operation of an alloy. So, let us look at a practical alloying system and try to see how to calculate this rho average of the alloy and how to calculate overall the volume of the alloy removed per unit charge that is given. Okay. So, to begin with let us look at an electrochemical machining process with pure uh, iron work piece where a removal rate of 5 centimeter cube per minute is desired and we will have to determine how much current would be needed in a ECM process for that. So, let us say if we look at the gram atomic weights table. So, the gram atomic weight and of course, the valency state of dissolution. and also the density comes from the standard tables as for particularly for iron, okay, because iron is the material to be removed comes out to be equal to 56 grams. Mostly iron goes in the divalent state. So, z equal to plus 2 right and then uh, the density of iron happens to be about 7.8 gram per centimeter, per centimeter cube we already know that m dot or the material removal rate is given by an expression a i by z f. This is a pure alloy, this is a pure system, there is no alloying component as such and this m dot uh, is also <laughs> expressed in terms of volume rate of removal q as a i by rho z f, this is in centimeter cube per second. Okay. And we have our volume removal rate which is intended in per minutes. So, we have 5 by 60 centimeter cube per second should be equal to atomic weight of iron which is 56 grams times of the current desired which we need to find out divided by the density 7.8 grams per centimeter cube times of the valency state. So, it comes as a divalent dissolution and of course, the Faraday value which is 96500 coulomb. In other words, uh, calculating this for i, you get a very uh, i value of about 22,000-2240 amps. So, what I want to bring to your notice is that a very small removal rate of only 5 centimeter cube per minute, which is actually uh, very small in terms of conventional machining processes that the machining would happen. In this electrochemical machining, a, such a high current value is needed, about 2300 amperes is needed, 2.3 kilo amps. So, uh, again it proves out that whether it is a mechanical process or whether it is a chemical process or electrochemical process. In general, these advanced uh, manufacturing methods do have a very high energy requirement, uh, but of course, there are connotations like you know being able to produce complex shapes or being able to uh, produce the desired roughnesses, which allows us to use these methods over some of the conventional strategies, which are widely available. So, that is the utility of uh, be it electrochemical machining, be it uh, abrasive jet machining, be it ultrasonic machining or any other non-conventional so called advanced manufacturing domain. So, the main key is the complexity which you have to uh, take into account for uh, design for manufacturing it and the main key also sometimes is the surface toughness or the surface finish of a particular part. 
and that is why non conventional non advanced and that is why the utility of such machining fabrication regimes uh, for micro systems engineering and micro systems design and fabrication. Okay. So, let us look at another alloyed system as I uh, just told So, uh, and, and just before uh, you know looking at an alloyed system, there are certain other uh, very fundamental level things which need to be uh, taken care of. So, the first thing that I would like to um, tell here is that in an actual ECM process, uh, there uh, you know the, the many other factors also which remove or which, which influence the material removal rate. Okay. And if you look at really uh, a simile between the, uh, the actual removal rates given by these dots here and the theoretically predicted uh, rates given by the straight line, there is some variation, some level of variation. And um, one of the main reasons is that uh, the sometimes uh, you know the theoretical removal rates are only based on one prominently available valency states of the material, but actually it may happen that the material may come out in more than one valency states. For example, iron uh, can exist as a ferric state plus 3 or ferrous plus 2 or in case copper uh, may exist as a plus 2 uh, cuprous or a plus 3 cupric uh, state. And so, the theoretical predictions really do not take care of or do not account for uh, what is the valency state which is coming out of the ECM process and uh, uh, therefore, uh, you know sometimes the theoretically predicted rates may not tally very well with the actual rates. The actual rates may be slightly lower because of multiple valency states which may be coming out of such a system. So, that is what one aspect is uh, or what has to be considered uh, for, for uh, any let us say electrochemical machining process. The other aspect uh, of course, uh, is the alloyed system as I told and uh, uh, standard tables like these are very easy or very convenient to look at uh, you know in a nutshell what all the different states are of a particular material or how they will come out uh, uh, and also what is the corresponding equivalent density or a gram equivalent atomic weight of a particular material. And so, these tables would be off and on used throughout this uh, lecture and even beyond for predicting some of the material removal rates uh, from a fundamental standpoint. So, now let us look at the alloyed system as I promised. So, we have a composition uh, called mnemonic 75 alloy here which is very often used and uh, ECM is performed off and on. So, the composition is uh, given right here in this table. So, you have all different phases in the alloyed system nickel, chromium, iron, titanium, silicon, manganese and copper and what these numbers are are basically they mention about the different percentages of presence of these different states like this is corresponding to x i for the nickel state, this is x i for the chromium so called for the you know 5 percent is uh, the amount at in which iron is uh, present, 0.4 percent is an amount in which titanium is present <coughs> so on and so forth. So, we need to calculate the removal rate in such a complex system alloyed system using the theory we have developed just now. Uh, and uh, the prediction has to be in centimeter cube per minute the rate of material removal. And uh, the only thing given to us is that uh, the current of 1000 amperes is passed and we want to use just the lowest valency of dissolution of each element. Although, <coughs> uh, when predicting actual rates may be different because of as I told you multiple valence states coming out in the dissolution process. So, uh, what do we do here? So, the first thing that comes to our mind is uh, uh, what the material removal of an alloying system would be and the removal rate as we just about derived and found out in the last uh, one or two slides uh, in centimeter cube per unit charge okay, per second is given by 0 0.1035 10 to the power of minus 2 that is about 1 by the farad 96500 coulomb times the rho average and this average is something we have to find out times of 1 by sigma x i z i by a i 
Okay. And so, this rho average is something that we need to determine for the particular alloy. Okay. So, what is rho average or how do we determine it? So, the average density can be really found out by looking at what is the total weight which is removed. So, let us say if W is the total weight of the electrode that is dissolved and this W has components x 1, x 2, x 3, so on so forth percentage wise of uh, materials with atomic weight a 1, a 2, a 3, so on so forth with the valency states, the lowest valency state z 1, z 2, z 3, so on so forth. Right? So, therefore, the total amount of and, and of course, the densities are rho 1, rho 2, rho 3, so on so forth. So, the total amount of uh, component corresponding to i equal to 1, which is present in this uh, w is essentially x i w or x 1 w by 100. For ith component it is x i w by 100. The total volume of the material which is present there is the total weight which is present divided by the density. So, the, for the ith component the total volume which comes out coupled in this weight w is basically x i w divided by 100 rho i. Okay. So, if I assume that the alloy essentially composes or is composed of all phases i's, we can say that the total volume coming out is actually given by sigma x i w by 100 rho i, where i varies from 1 to n. Maybe there are about one phase or uh, n phases of different materials. And the total weight you already know is w. right? So, the average density can thus be recorded as the total weight divided by the total volume which is coming out, which is corresponding to i equal to 1 to n x i w by 100 rho i. In just uh, you know a little simpler version can be 100 divided by sigma x i by rho i, okay, where i can vary between 1 to n system. So, that is how the average density can be uh, obtained. So, I would like to state here that in our case particularly because uh, we have uh, uh, almost 7, 8 phases as you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 phases with different uh, percentages and different of course, densities, different atomic weights so on so forth. So, the total amount of uh, rho in our case okay, given by this 100 by sigma i x i by rho i can be represented as 100 divided by the first percentage that is percentage nickel 75, 72.5 percent in the mnemonic alloy okay, divided by the <coughs> density of nickel which is 8.9 gram per centimeter cube <coughs> plus that of the second phase which is chromium. Third place is iron, you can see these different phases here titanium, fourth is silicon, manganese and copper. Okay. So, it is basically percentage of iron divided by density of iron plus percentage of the third phase by density of the third phase plus that of the fourth phase by density of the fourth phase plus fifth plus sixth plus seventh. Okay. And so, the average density in this case can be calculated as 8.18 gram per centimeter cube. So, once the rho average is calculated, then of course, the uh, material removal rate uh, or the volume per unit charge that you may have already seen before in uh, can be determined as 0 0.1035 10 to the power of minus 2 by this rho average value, which we have just calculated divided by 1 or, uh, or multiplied by 1 <laughs> times of sigma x i 
z i by a i okay. and this i basically varies between again 1 to 7 in our case. So, this can be written down here as 72.5 percentage x i equal to 1 times of the valency state, the lowest valency state for uh, nickel in which it comes out is 2, we have to take the lowest valency state divided by the atomic weight of nickel which is 58.71 plus uh, that for chromium plus that for the third phase plus that for the fourth phase plus that for the fifth phase, <coughs> sixth and seventh phases respectively. And uh, if you really look at the overall uh, value here, it comes out to be equal to <coughs> 0 0.35 10 to the power of minus 4 volume per unit charge centimeter cube per ampere second. Okay. And uh, obviously, when uh, a 1000 ampere current is used, uh, the removal rate that is the amount of uh, uh, material coming per unit time uh, is given by whatever this amount is times of charge per unit time or current. Okay. So, the q dot the material removal rate in this particular case would come out to be equal to the current value which is 1000 amps okay. and uh, we want to estimate the material removal rate in uh, centimeter per minute. So, therefore, whatever value we have we will have to <coughs> multiply that by 60. Okay. So, this is charge per unit seconds and uh, this would be charge per unit minute times of however volume whatever volume comes per unit charge which is 0 0.35 10 to the power of minus 4 as you can see from here and this becomes 2.1 centimeter cube per minute. So, again a very small amount corresponding to about a 1 kilo amp current and because it is an alloyed system, you have taken care of all the participants of the alloy, uh, you know participating in the in making the electrode in this particular system. And so, therefore, this is a very nice way of estimating uh, for particularly alloyed uh, systems the material removal rate. What I would now like to point out is uh, again, uh, you know something related to how uh, the potential would get distributed between the cathode and the anode once it is made a part of the electrochemical cell. And uh, for doing that, uh, we need to somehow look into the profile of the potential with respect to the inter electrode spacing or distance between the electrodes in such a system. So, let us look at that in details. So, um, if you look at the way that potential varies from the anode side, in this case this is the anode potential to the cathode side. Okay. So, uh, as I have already told uh, before that the work piece uh, is made the, uh, uh, the anode and the tool is made the cathode in this particular uh, machining operation. So, therefore, the, the relationship between the voltage applied across the electrodes and the flow of current uh, has a lot of uh, you know effects due to which the potential may get changed particularly because of the formation of dual layer, particularly because of the formation of migration, uh, particularly because of the formation of a resistive drop, this potential has substantial changes between one electrode and another. So, let us look at what all are the total components of such a potential profile which would be created in meaning thereby that what are the components which would cause the potential to drop as coming from anode to cathode. So, one of course, uh, is the overall electrode potential which is the anode of the cathode potential. Uh, the second component is uh, a drop, which is because uh, of a sort of activation polarization. Um, what that means typically is that the electrochemical changes are in equilibrium when no current flows okay. and uh, there is a barrier uh, potential, which is also the zeta potential. Uh, we have developed a lot of formulations on this before. Uh, and this basically is a barrier to a faster rate of reaction and uh, this barrier has to be crossed okay, 
So, the zeta potential barrier which has been made has to be crossed in order for the ions to start exchanging with the solution. So, an additional energy has to be supplied to get the required MRR. Okay. So, this is the over voltage therefore. So, whenever you are planning a certain voltage resulting in a certain current, you will have to accommodate for these over voltages and supply a slightly higher voltage, so that these losses can be taken care of while doing electrochemical machining. The second uh, reason for the potential drop is concentration polarization, which happens because ions migrate towards the electrodes of opposite polarities and there is a gradient <coughs> of concentration, which is created near any electrode surface, because uh, closest to the electrode the ion density would be the maximum and as you move away from the electrode the ion density would be minimum. So, there is always a concentration gradient and therefore, this uh, creates a sort of polarizing effect, because there is a slightly higher density and a very low density and there is a gradient which is existing. Okay. So, automatically there is a potential which is generated because of this sort of distribution of uh, charges uh, in a solution space and uh, this also needs to be added on to the overall uh, electrode potential, because this is typically a drop and this drop needs to be given externally from the circuit. So, you have over voltage due to activation polarization, you have a concentration polarization over voltage, which you are contributing to the overall uh, <coughs> design voltage that you are applying. And uh, then of course, you have ohmic over voltage, uh, which is because of the formation of thin films of solid materials. As you know that an electrochemical process sometimes really very close to the electrode deposits a very small layer of metal. Okay. Although, the purpose of the whole machining operation is to be able to immediately form precipitate from the debris which gets generated of the machining, but then 100 percent precipitation may not happen and there may be a small layer of uh, you know solid film which gets developed or generated, which would create uh, of course, a uh, over voltage effect. So, that barrier has to be crossed, it has the resistive drop component, the potential drops down and that extra potential has to be supplied uh, onto the uh, overall design voltage that you are giving to the flow cell, electro electrochemical cell. So, these over voltages ohmic in nature are because of films of solid materials forming on the electrode surface and therefore, an extra resistance would happen to the passage of the current through this. Uh, uh, the surface or close to the surface. So, the ohmic resistance <laughs> finally, uh, plays a role also in the solution side and therefore, there is of course, a ohmic resistive drop of the electrolyte itself, which would change majority of the potential function, which is available from one uh, electrodes potential to the other electrodes potential. So, this is across the bulk of the electrolyte. Okay. So, if you uh, plot all these different potentials or poten reasons for you know uh, the potential drops. Uh, reasons 1 to 5 in a plot and uh, see how uh, this potential varies as a uh, you know the distance inter electrode distance or electrode electrode spacing. So, you can see that this starts with the anode potential here <coughs> okay. and then there is a component which is added uh, because of activation polarization. This is due to the formation of that stable uh, layer, which is also the zeta potential of the electrode surface. Then of course, the ohmic over voltage, which is uh, a sort of uh, V equal to I R drop, the ohmic over voltage is because of the um, thin films, solid films formulated at the electrodes, extra depositions. And then there is a concentration polarization over voltage, because there exists a gradient of concentration. Okay. And so, that results in the whole anode over voltage. And uh, then of course, uh, the amount of voltage that is available to you at the end of all this after overriding these potential functions or over, over voltages is V minus delta V, okay, where delta V is an ensemble of all these different over voltage potentials. So, V minus delta V available here now goes from one side to the other uh, all the way to the cathode. Okay. And so, the drop therein across the bulk of the electrolyte in this region is called the ohmic resistance of the electrolyte. So, there is a V equal to I R relationship again and then it goes to the cathode side and a similar set of delta V's or over voltage functions are met at the cathode side. Thus, there is a equivalent V minus delta V, which is formulated as a result of electrochemical machining. So, that is how uh, you can categorize uh, the, the whole system of uh, ECM.
uh, therefore, the current which actually comes out now because of the electrochemical transport is given by the design voltage minus the over voltage per unit resistance of the bulk of the electrolyte and uh, R is the resistance of the electrolyte. <coughs> we could have considered the conductivities of uh, the tool and the work piece, but they are simply much, much larger in comparison to that of the electrolyte. So, the overall resistance which really comes is because of the the electrolyte and not the solid metals. Okay. So, we really do not consider, we consider electrode to be a sort of potential sink or a potential source for uh, <coughs> charges. And we do not consider what happens within the electrode in terms of its own drops or own resistivities. The conductivities are simply too high to be compared with the conductivity of the electrolyte uh, solution. So, whatever is the conductivity of the electrolyte is a standalone uh, conductivity which is available for the purpose of calculation of current in an electrochemical cell. So, typical electrolyte conductivities for example, uh, vary between 0 0.1 uh, to 1.0 uh, ohm inverse centimeter inverse. And if on a comparative basis you compare the conductivities of uh, let us say iron, which can be an electrode, it is about 10 to the power 5. So, you can see there is a difference of about close to 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 in terms of the conductivity values. So, iron is not matterable. What is matterable is this conductivity. So, <coughs> the surfaces of the tool and workpiece can be considered as by and large equipotential because the conductivity simply are too high. And uh, the conductivity of electrolyte is uh, not constant, rather it varies with temperature. And as you will see later on, we will have a design problem where uh, we will try to design the flow rates of the electrolytes flowing between a cathode and an anode. And uh, there you can find out that uh, how important or how critical temperature is. So, you will have to design the whole system based on whether uh, the overall temperature of the system will hit the boiling point of the electrolyte, which is actually a design fault. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the conductivity varies truly with temperature and there is a relationship which uh, gets generated because there is a uh, sort of you know coefficient of thermal coefficient or temperature coefficient associated with the conductivity value of an electrolyte. And we will put that in place when we come to that those uh, those calculations, uh, and somehow try to see what or how the MRR would be influenced because of these temperature variations of conductivities locally to an electrode or maybe into the bulk of the electrolyte. So let's look now at a very interesting aspect of uh, the how uh, the electrode and the tools would behave with respect to each other or in relation to one another. Uh, in terms of uh, dissolution and in terms of uh, a distance change between both the surfaces. As I already mentioned, the work piece uh, in an electrolyte or, or in an ECM process is always made the anode, thereby meaning it is connected to the positive uh, potential and the tool is made the cathode connected to the negative potential. And in this particular system, let us say we are considering a tool uh, which is an electrode uh, and the work piece, where work piece <laughs> and there is a relative motion between the tool and the work piece in the y direction. Uh, the flow of the electrolyte happens at a velocity v from this end right here to this end. So, the flow is in this direction of the electrolyte and uh, we want to model how uh, this system works because there would be a dissolution component associated with the work piece and there would be a relative motion between the work piece and tool. And so, there should be some kinematics taking place between this dissolution, which is receding away a surface and the approach of the work piece towards the tool. So, in this case we are assuming that the work piece is moving towards the tool. So, the work is fed here with a constant velocity, which we call f basically, okay, the feed rate. So, uh, we are feeding the work piece in the minus y direction, thereby meaning that the work is approaching the tool surface in the negative y direction. And we consider a one dimensional problem here. Uh, and try to find out what is the correlation between the dissolution and the velocity. So, we already know that the volume rate of removal of uh, uh, the material, workpiece material is given by A i divided by rho z f, A being the atomic number, i being the current in amperes, rho is the density of the material to be removed, z and f 
are the valency states and the Faraday constant respectively uh, for the workpiece material. So, if the total over voltage function which is available is delta v, meaning thereby that v minus delta v is the available voltage to us, then we have a relationship between um, the electric field and the current. So, you know that v equal to i r, right. And if we just uh, manipulate it a little bit, we can write these as 1 by k l by a, okay, where l is the length, uh, a is the area of cross section, k is the conductivity. And uh, therefore, we can easily convert this into a situation where v by l, which is also the electric field, okay, electric field is actually equal to i by k a. Okay, and this i by a is nothing but the current density j by k. So, therefore, the j in this case can be represented as this v minus delta v, which is the obtained voltage <coughs> provide per unit the distance of separation between the work and the tool at any given instance of time, let it be y t, okay, it is a function of time. So, this is the field which is available and the local conductivity assuming the whole process to be done at a constant temperature right now, just for simplicity's sake we would do that, comes out to be k v minus delta v by y t. Okay. So, that is how the current density term uh, in this whole electrochemical machining business would come out to be. <coughs> so, Now, the removal of the work material causes <coughs> the work piece surface to recede in the y direction. Okay. And this is with respect to the original surface. with the velocity depending on on q the volume removal rate and also depending on the interfacial area of both electrodes. So, obviously, if we consider a one dimensional motion, the volume removal rate per unit area of interface of the electrode would mean nothing but the velocity of recession of the surface because of the dissolution. Okay. So, therefore, we can easily say that d y by d t, which uh, where as you have already seen before, y is really is this distance. Okay. So, the distance between the work piece and the tool at a function of time. So, d y by d t becomes equal to the dissolution, which is a i by rho z f per unit area. Okay let us say the area in this particular case is q. <coughs> Some small q. Okay. So, this is the interfacial area. <coughs> so, that is how the surface is receding and this recession is in the opposite direction as the field. Remember, as we were talking about the uh, two electrodes here, this is the work, this right here is the electrode okay, or the tool. So, work is being fed in this direction minus y direction and the recession of the workpiece surface is in the plus y direction. 
because of the resolution. So, recession is given by this term a i by rho z f per unit area, area of this uh, shaded area is the shaded area, the interfacial area of the of the two surfaces and f is basically the feed. Okay. So, this minus the feed is the total amount you know uh, still kind of going backward, which is the change of this y with respect to time d y by d t. So, i by q is current density vector j. So, a j by rho z f minus f is how this uh, formulation will look like. And of course, we have already found out what this j value would be. So, we can say that d y by d t equal to a j by rho z f minus f can be written down as k a times of v minus delta v divided by rho z f, okay, where this uh, k v minus delta v uh, by y is the current density vector minus f. If you pull out y of the whole term, this happens to be some constant times of 1 by y minus f. Let us call this lambda. So, we have d y by d t is equal to lambda by y minus f and this is actually the kinematic equation for an ECM process. So, we will investigate various cases of constant feeds or zero feeds in the next lecture. Today, we are sort of coming towards the end of this uh, particular lecture. So, we will in, in a nutshell <coughs> uh, try to investigate how this y varies, uh, particularly when the feed is constant, when the feed is uh, zero feed or you know something uh, where uh, there is a definition of equilibrium gap, which comes between this receding surface and the feed when they equalize each other. So, we will look at those details in the next lecture. Thank you.